Hello, well, Friday, everybody. Um, unfortunately, this week I won't have a video, um, a fishing video up. Um, to replace it, I'll be doing a how to, how I tie my whipping rig, uh, the knot that I use, and basically how I work the upper and lower water column. And more so, this is just a general starting point for those who are either starting to get into it, um, who are already doing it, who may you know get a few tips from it that might improve um, overall fishing and um, yeah and if not I mean drop a comment below and let me know you know what is some of your you know favorite rigs or how do you like to fish it high low on the reef um, even your bait specific baits it's fine um, yeah just shoot them down in the comments um, basically I'm just gonna go over just how I tie how I set it up and basically when I'm fishing how I start every fishing trip and how I adjust and yeah we'll go from there but happy Aloha Friday and don't forget like comment subscribe as we try and put out a video at least one to two per week um, try to do is we're gonna be I'm gonna be doing a giveaway soon because we actually passed the 250 subscriber mark so stay tuned for that but until then Let's jump into the video. Yeah. So the first thing you guys want to do, make sure get all your line through your guides, put your pole off to the side and give you some slack. Then you're going to choose a weight, a barrel lead weight, um, anything between half to one ounce. First off, we're going to take your main line, take the barrel lead that you choose, start it off. So not, I'm going to be, that I use all the time, pretty much for all light game. Um, is the clinch knot so we're gonna first first we're gonna put it through put it through a loop and give yourself uh, a couple inches maybe two three if you really um, haven't tied this knot before and just to get used to it so what you're gonna do is with one hand kind of hold it and drop it behind the line so it sits like that, All right? Then you're gonna bring it over four times. So we got one, two, three, and four. All right? So now on the bottom here, as you can see, we have a small little hole. You're gonna come in from behind of it and you're gonna thread your line through, okay? Now you wanna pinch. Just to hold that there. Now you're gonna take your tag line here and we're going back in from behind again through this hole and up. Now what you want to do is you want to hold this tag line up as you start to slowly pull on your main line. You let the tag go and just cinch it down. And once you got that, you can actually take the extra off. Yeah, my scissors suck. <laughs> Need to get a new one. This is about halfway done. So remember, this is your main line. Light's gonna sit on top. Your two-way swivel. Um, two-way swivel sizes. Um doesn't really I mean honestly I don't think it matters but for me I kind of keep the loop part of the two-way about a little bit bigger than the bottom of the barrel lead so I think usually the sizes I buy is between uh, number four up to number number four I think to number one so your hook line um, will vary arm and a half to two arm lengths is pretty much what I use all around and pretty much for every type of fishing I do 
Um, so once you got that, we're going to go back, actually, to our two-way. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with our main line. So the next one is going to be attaching your hook. Um, hook sizes, for me, whipping grubs, anything from one inch up to maybe two inches. I use, actually, I use Maruto MZ hooks and I use anything between eight, number eight and number 10. So next, what you wanna do is take your hook and we're gonna start off by going into the eye sure what its current name is i learned this so long ago from my grandfather guys that but you want to give yourself quite a bit um especially if you're trying to learn this knot um so you want to go ahead and pinch right at the bottom of the hook bring it around and it creates a loop which we're going to need after and we're going to wrap seven times Four. I guess I got six on here. So now you're going to take your finger and you're going to pull your hook line and we're going to fish it through the eye again. And once we got that, we're going to slowly come over and you can see the loop on the bottom here. I'm going to fish it through. Don't get hooked. I'm gonna pull the line down like this through the loop. And basically, you're just gonna hold and you're gonna pull slow. And there we go. Never had any issues really fishing with this rig. And as you can see, we're gonna snip this, keep everything clean. Good. What I like to do is actually put it to the front and kind of push it and watch where the hook is. So my point is around here. I want it to be just in between the last rib. So I'm just gonna string it on. Poke it onto that last little rib. Fish it through and kind of slowly work it up past the knot. So it just covers it like this. That and I have pretty much max exposure for my gap. You know, so when a fish bites. I got a lot of surface plate, um, surface area I can cover with this hook to catch in the lip, corner of the mouth, pretty much anywhere in the, the the mouth region when they bite. So there we go, full rig complete. In this next clip, we are going to check out where you can be within the lower and the upper water column. Taking a look at the lower water column, uh, basically you're going to find about 80% of most species we go after, you know, including goldfish, um, thread fins, uh, papil, um, and a lot of extra uh, fish that sometimes do bite lures. And basically, I try my best to keep it at least one to two feet from the bottom. And the way you can attack this is basically reel speed and your rod tip. Now, depending on what reel you have, um, if it's a six to one, uh, you can actually crank slightly slower. You're gonna have to probably slow down your speed if you're not getting bites. If you are using a lower gear uh, reel, something, you know, five, five, six or something, you may have to crank faster. And in conjunction with that is your rod tip position. So you can adjust it by keeping the tip low to the ground, getting as close where you may get snagged, but that's where you need to watch your speed 
and adjust your rod tip and if you're still getting stuck or you're hitting the bottom you may have to crank faster so keeping one to two feet from the bottom um, your real speed comes the actual short pulls that you're gonna do and basically I do I mix it up I go one two or three pull uh, short pulls with three second intervals and I just mix it up three three one two three there's no specific that's just one way of just putting motion in the water giving something for the fish to actually lock onto and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to trigger a reaction from the fish when we're throwing lures out and if we don't create that reaction they're not gonna bite so the lower water column just remember stay as close as you can to the bottom one to two feet watch your reel speed uh, two to three short pulls with three second pauses and control your rod tip and I can guarantee you'll get just that much more bites of course fishing is fishing and not catching but just my way over the years that I've kind of narrowed down how to catch a uh, smaller reef fish here now the upper water column is going to be geared a little bit more towards um, species that tend to be mid to you know mid water up to the top surface and basically for me I kind of always use a faster reel because I want a medium to fast retrieve so basically I am throwing and keeping my lure in the two to four foot range from the bottom um, all depends on the depth um, you know you can generalize it so if it's 10 foot I would keep it around five you know somewhere in the middle and basically I would try to always start off with a medium and then fast uh, the pools on this I generally do the same one to three more so because I'm reeling one to two because I can get the rhythm going and you know couple second pause do it again one pull maybe two fast ones two fast ones one maybe real straight for a little bit um, just mixing it up um, the more you mix it up you know fish won't see something they seen before and may create a bite and that's what we're looking at is just creating more bites in the water um, not saying that you're gonna catch more doing it this way but this is just generally how I kind of go across and have a starting point every time I fish so that way I can just maximize the time I have on the water and you know if I catch I catch if I don't you know it's okay it's always tomorrow and with that you know save fish for the future generation especially catching the smaller ones we can let them go